sure everything's recording. Yes. And we're tested good. All right. All right, so for this one, I am slightly <laughs> intoxicated. And I, th I was thinking, you know what, let's record one. All right, so for the INTJ, the uh, cognitive functions are um, introverted, introverted intuition, extroverted thinking, introverted feeling, and extroverted sensing. And for those of you who are curious, I had um, wine. And it was organic wine because I'm trying to try something that is um, without the sulfites and all that stuff because I can get really nasty headaches um, from wines that have um, just all the uh, extra preservatives and flavor enhancers. So I tried an organic wine. It was only 10 bucks, 12.5%. And then a friend of mine came home um, that had a, a vodka that was uh, he really was excited about so I had a couple shots of that and so now I'm trying to take this test as an INTJ <laughs> and so what's it what's happened what's going to happen all right you regularly <laughs> make new friends um, okay so for an INTJ I'm going to say no um, you spend a lot of, t of your free time exploring various random topics that it pique your interest. And so, so my dad is an INTJ, and so I'm going to go off of some of what I know from him. Um, free time exploring topics. He's very well versed of um, lots of different topics. Because um, I think, so he's a very strong five on the Enneagram. And fives on the Enneagram want to um, be very well versed of different subjects and a topic and so I'm always kind of curious about the correlation between the Enneagram and um, the Myers-Briggs you know when have you ever monitored yourself like with headphones and you're talking through a microphone and there's this terrible latency so you say something and then like a second later you hear yourself and it just makes you uh, it has a lot <laughs> It's very difficult to say anything. Well, that's what I feel like right now. <laughs> and if you haven't had that experience, you should try it. It's great. <laughs> so we spend a lot of time exploring various, I'm gonna say yes. But the thing is with an INTJ, I think it's not necessarily that they're interested in the various different topics. Like an INTP, for instance, there's intrigue because you have to be the best. You have to be the smartest. You have to display your dominance. You have to display your, yeah. So that might be a little bit of a different influence. So maybe it will discern the difference. And I did um, test out as INTJ. I forgot which one that I did. Maybe it's ISTP. I forget which one, which one I did beforehand, but I, I end up testing up as an INTP or INTJ. And I, I don't want to just remember what I did especially if I'm intoxicated it's hard to remember but um so I'm going to be answering them um brand new so we'll see how close I get especially in this condition seeing other people cry can never no definitely not make them cry at least from my experience with an INTJ that is not their strength you often make up Make a backup plan before a backup plan. Yes. My dad is a five wing six. And I hear five wings or at least six is very fearful people. Even though they might not want to um, expose that. You usually stay calm even under a lot of pressure. My dad does. So I'll say yes. I'm getting a new microphone. I'll still use this one. The new microphone I'm using is a task cam. It, um, it's a large diaphragm and I got it super cheap over, it was like 65% off or something like that. Um, it's for different purposes, more for like music making. I'm really excited about it. At social events, you rarely try to introduce yourself to new people and normally talk to new people that you are to people you already know. So my dad, so with a five, you stress as a seven especially in social gatherings you'll start acting as the party clown and you start attracting people and it's it seems as if you are talking to new people engaging with them and you're comfortable with it but really you're stressed and so with that i will have to say disagree all right we finished the first one you prefer to completely finish one project before starting another i think intjs are probably like that you're very sentimental, but because the INTJ has no 
um, sense or like um, sensory function besides external or extroverted function, extroverted mm -hmm. sensing, and it's the mm -hmm. least, um, I'll have to say no. Um, and so nothing is being internalized from the senses that they experienced. Um, you like to use organizational tools like schedules and lists. My dad does, so I'm gonna have to say yes. Based on the cognitive functions, I do wonder if introverted intuition is inclined to lists and all that because it's very finite. You know exactly what you're doing and how to accomplish what you are wanting to achieve either in the day or in your life. Even a small mistake can cause you to doubt your overall abilities and knowledge. I'm going to say yes as an INTJ who are who is very like cognitively driven. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out extroverted thinking versus introverted thinking. Um, you feel comfortable just walking up to someone you find interesting and striking a conversation. I'll have to say disagree. You are too interested in various different topics or various different <laughs> in discussion. <laughs> Let me try this again. You are not. <laughs> <laughs> too interested in discussing various interpretations and analysis of creative work. <sighs> That's difficult because I think an INTJ would like debating the difference, uh, like different, um, like different topic, different topics of creative, creative analysis and stuff like that. <sighs> Maybe not discussing maybe that's the difference between discussing versus debating because um yeah i think they love debate and i think that's their extroverted thinking function at play but discussing it man that's difficult but i'm gonna my inclination says disagree maybe it's because i had wine and vodka but so that's that's why i'm going to think um, but man, in my intro, like in engagements, they like discussing it, but it's because they have a very strong, in like, um, like view of what something is. But the thing is, my dad, for instance, really loves allegory versus like actual creative work, and I think he gets really annoyed with the creative work versus things of allegory. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that you are more inclined to follow your head than your heart i'll say agree <laughs> i'm going very extreme more than i normally would when i am a little more sober i just finished editing a lot of photos for a client i told myself do not export any of these look over these the next day make sure these are actually like good so any of you that want to hire me for your next photography work i am not a complete fool um, so <laughs> I will look at these later to make sure that they are good. And I didn't, I added, I finished them, but I kept the program more uh, running. So the morning of the next day, I will look through them again and make sure that they are good. You usually prefer doing what you feel like in any given moment, instead of planning a particular routine, I will have to say disagree. Um, so there's this one time I got absolutely wasted at a, at a, a new year's party. And this feels almost like that. I did not have that much, but there are certain drinks that like to climb up on you. And when I was in their kitchen at a party um, and they were drinking responsibly, I had no idea had any of this stuff actually worked. And so I was, I thought I was being um, responsible because at 12 o'clock, ball drops, we were gonna watch the ball drop on TV. And then shortly after I was like, okay, I'm going to leave. So when I when I was drinking, I, I made sure I stop at nine o'clock. Um, and I was like, that's plenty of time to sober up and make sure that I'm good for driving. I had jungle juice, I had beer, I had mixed drinks. So like cocktails that were 40% and stuff. And I was slowly dimming and blacking out. And but at and I I didn't eat that much at all um all day. I didn't know how alcohol worked, and so I was like thinking I was doing the right thing. And so nine o'clock I stop. But as I was talking to people in the kitchen, I was trying to be as normal as possible. And that's what the thing that reminded me of is that it feels like that I'm trying to be as normal as possible, and that is failing. <laughs> and so 
I was dimming out and then eventually I was like, I don't feel so good. So I go to the bathroom and I go number one. And then I was like, you know what? Something else is not feeling good. And so I start vomiting and um, I'm vomiting all the colors. So red, purple, green. I think there was even blue in there because like the mixed colors were all fancy. Um, yeah, just different drinks. And they were all very colorful. And so for the next well, long time I was vomiting and then trying to pass out because I was just so, I don't know what that is, just miserable pretty much. And people were feeding me bread to try to make sure I'm awake and I get something to to absorb um, the alcohol. And they're all people that know how alcohol works. They know their limits. I never had that before. And I think this was, I don't know, I was probably 20 six, 25, 20, maybe even 24. I was pretty old. And so I, I'm vomiting even the bread and I'm passing out and people are trying to keep me awake. 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock hits and I am still vomiting and just out of it. And I'm like, crap. And so I met a, on, on the friend's couch and some people are still up and engaging and stuff. But about 4 a.m. I sober up and I feel okay. I'm in, uh, I let's we'll see, I'm in a, a town that's about, oh, maybe 30 minutes from where I live, 50 minutes from where I work. And I, uh, I, I, at 4 a.m., I'm thinking, okay, I'm actually feeling good. And I need to get to work by 8 a.m. So I have four hours. I make it home. I fall asleep for a couple hours and then I wake up. And I go to work, and I'm working at a uh, at a uh, <laughs> distribution center. So I have forklifts, high chemical product that I'm messing with, chlorine, acid. You put those together, you have the Holocaust. And I'm doing that all day, and all day I'm crying because, um, <laughs> like my emotions. I don't even know what it was. It's just, I think it was just alcohol. You just, some, some barriers are just broken and I'm listening to, so I used to lead praise at a church. I had the last session recorded before I was kicked out at that church and I'm listening to it and just crying because I miss the people that I was with and just sad about all the church stuff. And I was trying to pay attention to work and just the whole day was just weird. I even recorded myself when I was throwing up and stuff the night before and I'd watch it. And I'd be like, wow. And I was like having the most intricate conversation with God because I'm just like telling him people would prefer being absolutely wasted and vomiting than the things that they feel because of life. And I was having the most existential. Uh, why am I talking about this? <laughs> <laughs> so I in TJs. Okay, so yeah, this is me a little bit intoxicated, and I just kind of remember things and tell you about. It. I was even thinking about. I'm not gonna tell them all that stuff, and you know what? I did. Hopefully, it was slightly entertaining. And so yes, I did not die that day, but I cried all day, and I never did that again. I'm even listening to my roommate walking in and out, and he's probably hearing me talking about all this stuff. You rarely worry about whether you make a good impression on people you meet. Rarely worry? Mm, I think that is a heavy disagree. You enjoy participating in group acti activities. I think that's a heavy disagree. You like books and movies that make up with you, that you come up with your own interpretation at the ending. I think, ooh, this is something I'm, I don't, I don't know. Extroverted thinking is a very puzzle-minded person. I think they're more inclined to open ends so that there's more interpretation and discussion and debate. Your happiness comes from helping others and accomplishing. I think that is a heavy disagree. Um, you are interested in so many things that you find it difficult to choose. What you know, I think that is a difficult, that is a disagree. Watch, I'm going to get this one. <laughs> because I'm not so caught up with my thoughts. Maybe I should do this every time I'm taking these tests and I'll actually get it right. You are prone to worrying that things will turn out for the worse. You know what? I think this is a yes. You avoid leadership roles in group settings. Oh man, this is a difficult one because I think 
some INTJs could be inclined to wanting to exercise their prowess about the topic that they will put themselves out there. But I think in the end, they do avoid the leadership um, because they know that they're not so great at it, but they are very great at the topic. They may think they're really great at the leadership part because they're great at the topic, but not because, but then later on they might find out they're not actually very good at leadership because they don't care about people. That was with my straightforwardness. <laughs> you are definitely not an artistic type. That's difficult. Cause like, let's say, so for my dad, he thinks in metaphor and allegory, and he'll draw little pictures that represent the thoughts that he has, which in essence is an artist. But he wouldn't be very inclined to color and like composition and all that stuff, but he is driven to be creative. He is artistically expressing his thoughts. <sighs> But, you know, this will be one of the few. You are definitely not an artistic person. I'm going to put on the positive side, but not completely this time. Oh, man, my, I still feel like I am listening to a latency. You think the world would be a better place if people rely more on rationality. I think that's probably something um, and less than their feelings. You prefer to do your chores before allowing yourself to relax. So this... I wouldn't be able to, I'm even swaying the whole world is. <laughs> so my dad, for instance, he would be more inclined to want to finish off um, his chores before relaxing. Now, I don't know per se if this is an INTJ thing or if this is something that has been inclined into him or if it's just, just kind of more his person. If I look, so I even have a cute little blue thing that holds my phone up so I can look at it and I changed the setting so that it doesn't go to sleep, so I don't have to keep tapping it. Um, that was recent, and I should have thought of this earlier. Um, I think because of maybe introverted um, intuition, I want to better understand in, um, introverted intuition because I have extroverted intuition, and they seem so different. So introverted intuition likes to f um, bring things to a final point point it's it's reducing things and so i could see how chores would be very um uh, intriguing to a type that has introverted intuition because when you're bringing down to a final thing whatever that is and now it's a task i don't know how that might interact with the rest of the functions but when you complete it you can now move on to the next finite thing um, extroverted thinking, you have puzzles. So maybe you want to complete the puzzle before you can move on. Introverted feeling is more about, I guess, your moral code. And you really could have, I guess, a very tight moral code about what it means to be um, tidy, neat, clean, professional. Maybe not no, more, Maybe not so much about like what it means to be what it means to be like a, a good person. Well, I mean, telling the truth, being honest, I guess an INTJ can have that, but they are maybe inclined to get their point across and their motives and their inclinations rather than the good of the people. But, um, and then you have extroverted sensing as a weak point, but dang it. You prefer to do your chores before I'm I'm going to lean on what I have experienced. So if that tells about my type, you prefer to do your chores. So I'm going to say yes. Man, we're at 40%. You enjoy watching people argue. Ooh, this is a difficult one because my dad hates conflict. And I'm curious about INTJs, about conflict. I don't know what the correlation would be, though, with their cognitive stack other than introverted feelings so you might feel very uncomfortable about people arguing because now there is disunity or whatever your moral code is um, but i could see an intrigue about it because there is um, push about who has the best um uh who has the best insight about some kind of topic and the person with the strongest mind wins and following that might be intriguing. Crap. 
Oh, bugger. So you enjoy watching people argue. We've, so actually I went with my dad to a, not a debate, but it was a um, creationist versus evolutionist place or like a venue at a college. Um, the person that I was talking was about, not necessarily creationism, but his in intellectual design. And there were people that would come up and want to argue with him. And my dad would be very, um, very conscientious of their motives of what they're trying to get at. And he would be kind of loud about his perception about their, um, like what they're trying to get at in their argument. And he would be discrediting them in that interaction. You enjoy watching people argue. But because of the conflict though, I struggle with that. And that's just something that I have experienced personally. And I don't know if that's with every INTJ. I'm going to go with that because that's what I've experienced. You enjoy watching people argue. I won't go all the way because I think there is some enjoyment with the argument because you want to experience um, the debate and you want to even kind of participate in it, participate in it secondhand. Um, to kind of test your own intellect. Um, you tend to avoid drawing attention to yourself. I'm just going to say yes. Unless you're a five and you're stressing as a seven, even though that's a little different from the Myers-Briggs, your mood can change very quickly. My dad can be moody. But I think for the most part, you know what, let's do here. You lose patience with people who are not as efficient as you. I think highly yes. You often end up doing things at the last possible moment. I'm going to disagree, but not entirely. Um, you have always been fascinated by the question of what if anything happens after death. I think that is a valid thing for INTJs to want to ponder. You usually prefer to be around others no, <laughs> you become bored or less interest or lose interest when uh, the discussion gets highly theoretical. I think that is a high no. Some INTJs, no, I think that's for the most part. Some INTJs have been curious because they, be, they would seem very bored about it. But I think for the most part, you find it easy to empathize with a person who experiences, let me just say no. You usually postpone finalizing decisions as long as possible. I think that's nope. You rarely second guess yourself. Actually, you know, because I know for INTJs, they show the presence as if they have a very confident like thought about something. I don't know what's going on inside their head. But I'm going to go by what it feels like, how they present it. You really second guess yourself? I'm going to say no. After a long and exhausting week, a lively social event, I'm going to say no. All right. You enjoy to go uh, going into art museums. I'm going to say, ooh, actually, you know what? They might be inclined to want to go do something. Actually, this is a very difficult thing. Have you bought my friendship journal yet? <laughs> Has lots of questions in it. And uh, it'll be very good for you to connect with your friends. I actually heard some good stuff uh, from a friend of mine who did it with um, his friend. And they had a whole memorable experience doing this. Um, with each other so um, link is in the description below if you want to buy one you can buy either of uh, this sorry uh, friend <laughs> I'm intoxicated a hard cover or a soft cover and um, there are two different prices but I get the same amount either way you enjoy going to an art museum I was hoping at the very end of that I would come to a conclusion Man, this is tough. I'm going to say, because I've gone to an art museum with my dad, but I think it's more about experiencing something. But for it, because introverted intuition is their cognitive function, but in their shadow side, extroverted intuition, which is very driven by experiences, is on their shadow side, but the dominant. 
I'm going to say yes. Um, you, but not heavily. You often have a hard time understanding other people's feelings. <laughs> I'm sure they would say, oh, I understand people's feelings, but because it's an INTJ, I'm going to say no. You like to have a to-do list for each day. I'm going to say yes. Um, you rarely feel insecure. Ooh, they kind of project themselves as people that, that are not as insecure. A lot of times when that happens, that means they're very insecure, insecure, or they are very insecure because especially intellectual types are always insecure about their thoughts. So, uh, oh, you rarely feel, I'm going to say no. You avoid making phone calls. My dad does. Going off the fog, cognitive functions, <laughs> cognitive functions. Mm, I'm going to even say yes. Very introverted, um, just inclinations, and their extrovertedness is thinking. And so puzzles and sensing, sensing may not be the right kind of sensory experience. So I'm going to say yes. Um, that would be inclined to phone calls. You often spend a lot of time trying to understand the views that are from different people. Oh, man, this is tough. Because, like, so INTJs are kind of brats in a way that they're just, like, they know everything about the world. And then about a week later, when they find out something new, they are very loud about their new, um, ex um, um, what they find out. But they don't realize that they were completely the opposite of um, what they were saying um, just a week earlier. I'm very loud about it too. So I'm gonna say no. You often spend a lot of time trying to understand. Even in their cognitive functions, I'm, I think other than extroverted thinking, maybe people are puzzles, but I'm gonna say no. In your social circle, you are often the one who contacts your friends and initiates activities. Oh, wow. So I don't know. So I guess with INTJs, they would be more so the withdrawn types, but they could push themselves to want to be more engaged in their social environment. Um, and I wonder if extroverted sensing might have something to do with that, but not so because of the people, but because of the experience, not even just the experience that might be extroverted intuition, but like stimulating themselves of, um, the things that are going on in your social circle. You are often the one who contacts your friends, but INTJs are not very social creatures for the most part. And everyone is either a liability or an asset. So I'm going to say, heavy no. If your plans are interrupted, your top priority is to get back on track. I'm gonna say yes. Um, you are still bothered by mistakes that you made a long time ago. So when talking with my dad, he keeps saying, I'm not gonna be, I'm not going to be disappointed in myself with the past, or I'm not gonna regret the past, but I'm but he will confess a thing that he realizes something he could have done better or that he does even kind of regret, especially like with parenting and stuff. But it seems like he really does move on by the things in the past. And as someone who is an introverted censor by the tertiary, at least, um, I am more bothered by the mistakes I make. I think he has some, and introverted sensing would be his demon function. So I wouldn't think that would be his first inclination. You rarely contemplate the reasons, rarely contemplate the reason for human existence, human existence or the meaning of life. I'm gonna say disagree. Your emotions control you more than you control them. I would say disagree. You take great care not to make people look bad, even when it is completely their fault. I'm going to disagree, but not entirely. I think INTJs, well, a couple of reasons. One, I think they might be inclined to want to express the truth, but I think also because of their intellectual prowess, 
I think they would want to make sure that they can climb the ladder of whatever they're in and it might come to their benefit to, well, this other person, they did do something wrong. I could see them wanting to fight with their um, introverted feeling if depending on their um, moral values that can kind of conflict with how um, uh, with how they might bring up different situations but I think they might want to reel back a little bit if that is the case but I think for the most part they would throw someone under the bus man so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go partial okay we're almost there I think we have two more pages your personal work style is closer to spontaneous bursts of energy <laughs> no when someone thinks highly of you you wonder how long it will take for them to feel disappointed in you it will take them to feel i'm gonna say i'm gonna say no because i think they have a set like a certain kind of confidence of what they're doing um they project that kind of confidence so i'm gonna say no but i'm gonna say a little bit because I think thinker types might have a little bit of insecurity when it comes to that stuff, just a little bit. But you will love a job that requires you to work alone most of the time, I think. <laughs> Highly, yes. You believe that pondering abstract philosophical questions is a waste of time. I'm going a little bit in the middle. I've, I've experienced some that are very much like, absolutely not. This is great stuff to, con uh, to contemplate. And then others where it's like, they may not, maybe it's that they don't have the tools. I don't know. But we'll put that there. I am extremely dizzy. I don't even have a pop filter. I have one on the floor, though. Wow, even doing that was an adventure. See? I can pop all I want, and you won't experience the, the terror of that. You feel drawn, more drawn to places with busy, bustling atmospheres than quiet intimate places so my dad likes to people watch but for the most part he hates like concerts and other places that have such a high like lines he hates lines um and so all my life i thought lines were evil until i was like you know what i don't mind lines so much so you feel more drawn i'm going to say heck nah but there are some inclinations that might be interesting to an intj like people watching you know at first glance how someone is feeling i want to say no initially but there's a part of me where my dad is if there's something wrong with me for instance he'll start he'll know immediately and start to um like what is it called take temperatures of like how i'm feeling and send out little feelers thump Ooh. so i'm going to man this will be the first one where i'm like kind of yeah you often feel overwhelmed does an intj feel overwhelmed i think so um, you content or you complete things methodically without skipping over any steps. I think there's a part of me, yes, but not like heavy handedly. You are very intrigued by things labeled as controversial. I think no, but as they get older, those controversial controversial things become more intriguing because they provide more input that refine and kind of embellish their thought process. But I think initially, if if the uh, controversial thing provides not uh, conflict, confusion, disorientation, I think they're quick to just kind of throw it out. You would pass along a good opportunity if, some, if you thought someone else needed it more? I think no. But there might be an INTJ who is inclined to want to go, especially introverted feeling that is driven by morals. And that's hard, I think, because like if you have a strong moral mindset about what to do and what not to do, um, that could make you do all sorts of weird things. That's very controversial to your type. You struggle with deadlines. I'm going to say no. You feel confident that things will work out for you. 
<laughs> it's always this one. I'm like, oh, because it's also the last question. Um, that things will work out for you. So, introverted intuition. When they go into their loop, introverted intuition and introverted feeling, I guess it's not necessarily about the future. It's more about they are stuck if they um, behave what they think is what they feel is right morally. Um, it may go against what is, if I remember right, best for everyone else, and they can feel very. Um, conscientious about it and stuck because what's logical and the best pragmatic not maybe not pragmatic but logical um and uh what's the word um efficient way to do something might go might go against their moral code because they might be seen as a bad mean person or something like that so that may not necessarily be about the future things will work out but because of their pressure into like wanting to be at the top of the food chain um especially intellectually i think either that comes from a sense of high insecurity that things will not work out so you better be a hungry fish or they're rather confident in themselves and they are a j judging type introverted intuition that's something because it's a judging um type Ugh. so i'm going to say yes all right, everyone, ladies and gentlemen, everyone in between. What is the, what is, what are, what is the results? What are the results? Ugh! Okay, here we go. And yeah. All right. So I got the INTJ. So, so far now, granted, I had the INTP because, well, I am INTP, but all the introverted types, I'm able to peg better. And I think I also have better one-on-one -on -one experiences. I'm very curious uh, what the next sensory ones and introvert or intuit intuitive ones <laughs> that are in the future uh, see if i might be able to get them that's very interesting all right so um stay tuned for the next one and i'll see you in another video another life i will probably be a little bit more sober and it won't be 11:42 p.m <laughs> all right bye <laughs>